Hello everybody, it is Chris T and today we are back with another scrawler box video and I need to put a few disclaimers. I have two of these boxes in my house right now because I am running behind on life things in general. Unfortunately, I don't know which one is older, if it's this one or the other one. I had kept track of them for a while, but every time I clean my room, I move where they are and so I don't know if this one is more recent. But there's a third one that's coming in the mail soon, so I was like, I need to open at least one of them. I also have to get to work soon. So <laughs> so we're just going to at least open up the box and then I can come back to this later. But without further ado, Scrawler Box. Okay, here are the contents and it looks like this is from September. So I am assuming the other one might be from August. I really don't know because these also come kind of late since they're coming from uh, the UK. So I'm not 100% sure, but it is okay. We have our little scrawler zine right here. We have our beautiful picture for the month of September, which is cool. Looks like we're going to have Posca products, which I'm pretty sure I could see anyways. And this is from the artist SP0. There are his links right there. I don't know if you can see. It looks like on Instagram, it's SP076, Facebook, SP076Art. But that is really nice. I really like this kind of graffiti-like cartoony art style. I think it's really nice. Not really my art style, but I love looking at on other people's art. Oh, we have marker paper. Okay, okay. And it looks like it's from Art Gecko. And it looks like... It is perfect for Pasca. Oh, that's interesting. I do want to look at the paper first. I usually don't do this, but I know marker paper is typically smooth and typically thin. And this paper is definitely smooth. Like that has not a single grain. And if you are a watercolor artist like me, finding something with not no grain is very, very strange. Um, and it looks like the pages are actually pretty thick, which makes sense because if it's perfect for Poscas, you are gonna want some thickness because they are a rough medium that kind of bleed very quickly. So that's um, that's the paper. I don't know how to tell you, show you how thick it is, but it also looks like it's this very nice white, kind of cool tone white color. Not that that matters, but I might as well show you all. And here in our tissue paper is our supplies. I like these colors. They kind of like, in terms of a color scheme, they're all the very, they're all the same um, tone. So none of them really stick out. It kind of all blends together in a way. But I think stylistically, if you're into that, that's pretty cool. And I just love these stickers. I love stickers. So I have something to put onto my sketchbook. I should put that here. Next, we have our little menu for the month of September, which is gonna show us all of our supplies, but we'll see what we can figure out in the meantime. We have these big 5M size, PC5M, so I always just call them like 5M. I don't know if that's meters, milliliters, moments in time, <laughs> but it looks like true to the art that we got, it is in the exact same colors as our print, which is pretty cool. And then we have two more Posca pens and these are in the 3M size so they're a little bit thinner and this is actually quite exciting because I don't have any thinner Poscas. All of mine are this bigger size since I knew I wanted to do bigger illustrations but having some in a white and black color and have them be in a smaller size is great because this is going to be good for line work. This is going to be good for highlights and just details over on the piece so very very excited to do that. Nowadays I don't do too much line work in black but there's always a time and a moment for it. And I think with Posca's, it would just make it stick out a lot better. So not mad about that. Next, to continue on our fast talking train and going through these products, we have a Faber-Castell Echo Pigment, and it looks like a fine liner in a size 0.6. So this is really nice. I haven't seen a fine liner with this shape before, with this barrel, but I like that. I like this grip. Let's open this up. Okay, and it's 0.6, which typically for the art that I do and the paper size that I work with, I usually like a finer nib on my fine liners. But once again, we're working with Posca pens and these are pretty big doodly daddlies. Why, why did I say that? These are pretty big markers. So honestly, a bigger tip would make more sense in terms of how much ground we're going to be covering. And of course we have a nice, beautiful stapler. 
Staedtler Mars Lumograph Black 2B Pencil, which is nice because I am not a person who just goes into any artwork with just balls to the walls using markers. I always like to go in with a pencil line work first. So that's good to have. And last, but certainly not least, is our UK brand candy. And it looks like this is a drumstick rhubarb and custard flavor. I've got to be honest, haven't had many rhubarb and custard flavored anythings, but it looks like this is vegan and it's free from artificial colors, which I am a fan of that. But without further ado, let's get to swashing. And again, this is a 2B pencil. I don't typically use 2B pencils. I'm not into like dark pencil sketches, especially because I'm typically painting, so I have to erase things anyways. So not a lot of black is pretty much my preferred. I promise my handwriting is not typically that bad, but it's not necessarily the best either. Also with this Faber-Castell fine liner, it is waterproof. I did read that on the little menu. You're not really gonna be able to see this much because it's white on white. Um, I will say where I first used it, it's already ripping up the paper pretty heftily, which I'm not really surprised about. That was actually really smooth. Okay, let me swatch these and I'm gonna give you my thoughts on the paper. Okay, I swatched all of the Poscas out and even though when I first went in like a circle kind of roughly with the white and it started ripping up the paper, I was like, hmm, not sure if this paper is actually going to be as great as it says. But when I went in with each and every color after, I take back my original thoughts. With this paper, I do see where you can get a nice, very flat color laid on there and it goes on so smooth, which is what you would hope for with marker paper. And if you go fast enough, if you get a smooth layer down quick enough, you won't rip up the paper, which you might be saying, but if I wanted to do multiple layers, is there even any point? Yes, there is a point because once the first layer dries and you paint over top of this, you're not really eating at the paper. You're just hitting the paint already dried onto the paper. So you're not going to rip up the paper as much. And I feel like with this paper, you can actually use it pretty effectively with these markers. So we're not mad about that. Again, these colors are a very similar tone though. So it's going to be interesting trying to figure out how we're going to use this in terms of an art piece because I want to use these as is. I don't want to mix them with each other or like mix them in a separate palette and then come back to the paper. That's not how I like using Posca's. I like using them straight up. So maybe I have to kind of free my hand up to do something along the lines of this where everything is similarly toned with just some pops of black and white. I guess what makes the most sense but these three colors together I wonder what kind of art piece to do but since I have to go to work we'll come back for that. But yes, I do like this paper. I think this is actually one of the better things that Scrawler Box has given us because this I can see using with my other Poscas as well. So that's cool. Getting Poscas is cool. These two I'm probably most excited about. And if this fine liner is truly waterproof, I'll be pretty excited about that as well. Okay, we're back. I doodled an idea that I want to do on a sticky note at work so I don't have that sticky note but I think for this piece I'm thinking of some kind of like snowy scene or just like a wintry scene I don't know I think I'm kind of feeling the wintry weather idea it was very cold yesterday it was like 30 some degrees where I live and it's still November and I was like man it feels like winter I had to wear a whole coat so we're gonna go with that also, if you guys were wondering, I did try that candy. I don't have the wrapper anymore. It was rhubarb and cream and custard, I think. And I don't know what rhubarb tastes like, but I assume some kind of root idea. And I feel like I got that flavor and I also got the custard flavor. So overall, it was a really good candy. Very sticky, very sticky, yes. Also, I have my headphones in, so I really can't hear myself as nicely as I should be able to. Just listening to some Ghibli music gets me in a nice mood for drawing. But I feel like I sound so groggy. And if you are picking up those notes too, I am. I just woke up. <laughs> and this was the first thing on my agenda to do. So I've got that morning voice going for me. Okay, yes, I'm also drawing a person. And I will say for this piece, I know what I want it to look like. 
but I don't know if I'll be able to figure it out with the Poscas just because I want to add color, but the Poscas are kind of thick and I want to add a lot of black. So uh, I don't know. I, you know what? Let's not talk about it. I'll figure it out in the time that it takes to figure it out. Is there something that you guys feel like you just lazily draw the same way each time and it's just kind of like what it is? Cause like, I feel like ears, I really don't care for like going into it with ears, but I just like always draw it the same way and they come out like perfect. I mean, obviously not like beautifully perfect, but as perfect as I need them to be. And I like that about, I like that. I like having something like that in my drawing that I know, even though I change up my eyes every single flipping artwork, my ears always remain pretty much the same. Even noses I change sometimes, but I'm kind of liking like two little points for noses, just like boop, 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 boop. I like that because it's easy and it's enough of an anime nose that you understand. And sometimes I like the little like circle at the top to kind of give an idea of it. And maybe even a line sometimes, that's fine. That's fine, that's fine. Actually, I'm gonna make this nose a little bit wider. Yeah, I think that kind of helps. Yeah, I like that. Okay, we're pretty much ready to start um, with the Poscas and the fine liner. And I honestly, I'm going to use every single thing for this, for this piece specifically, because I definitely need everything for this piece specifically. Um, I realized that this paper is not the easiest to erase with. Like, it's not doing the best job at erasing. And I just wanted to point that out just in case you were curious. And I can see that because a lot of people, better people than me, I'll tell you that, usually will draw their sketch and then use a light box to put the final piece on. And I don't have a light box. I never really used a light box, except for when I was in school, but that's besides the point. So for me, if I have an idea, even if I drew it really nice in my sketchbook, I have to always redraw it onto the final piece. So it's always gonna get a little bit more sketchy. So for me, having paper that's very good at being erased is ideal. But that's not a problem for this piece because honestly, a lot of these things are gonna be blacked out with paint or blocked out with paint and it's gonna be very opaque, so it's not really gonna matter. I wasn't thinking about coloring her face in, and so that's kind of what I'm concerned because I had a lot of guidelines there in the beginning. But what I'll do is I'll go in with the fine liner, get all the details in, and then I'll try to erase them much more. So I want to say, I know I draw a lot of Afro girls and I promise I know how to draw other hairstyles, <laughs> but I do really like some big hair sometimes. But also for this piece, I knew I wanted to do a lot of black and I didn't want this hair to kind of touch the clothes because I didn't want there to be too much black on black. I wanted some separation, which you can kind of see here. And I knew I would get that with this hair, but also get enough hair that I can have a lot of stark black places. I think this is where things are gonna get kind of interesting because I'm not entirely sure how to accomplish what I want to accomplish. I'm sorry that I don't know how to explain this process. You guys can kind of get a gist of what I'm doing so far. I can't, therefore I hope you can. <laughs> so yeah, I, I kind of wanted to put some places where I knew there was going to be like a highlight in pink and a low light in purple. And I guess blue is kind of our central color maybe. I don't know. I still don't know what I'm going to do for like the skirt at the bottom here, but I'm going to start going in with the black, start sculpting things out. And then once I kind of get through that, define some areas, figure out this area figure out the face. Okay, 
this poor black marker, I'm really putting it through a lot of uh, strain, if I can say. Um, yeah, I'm putting it through a lot. I can tell you that very, very honestly. Um, I had to switch the nib around because the other nib was getting too like dry and gunky. And that's pretty much my fault. I haven't layered Pascas like this before and I thought it would just be hunky-dory. No, the answer to that is no, it's not hunky-dory to just keep switching them in and out like this. Uh, or to paint over top of other paint like this. It's kind of doing the nib in. But now that I switched it and I'm mostly painting on dry, it's not as bad. I think I'm running out of, I don't know what it is. I feel like I'm running out of black ink. I keep flipping the nib to see if that helps. And I keep, I keep, um, trying to like activate it, pump the barrel, but I feel like I'm not getting any more ink. And it's really, 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 really annoying right now. I know I put a lot of black on this and I know this is the smaller barrel. It's not as much as the bigger barrel, but like you can't get me through one painting of this size. That's not good. I'm just gonna use my black Posca pen because mine's is the 5M size, so it's bigger. And because I don't want to not finish this piece, and I'm not getting the results I'd like with that marker, so. Okay, honestly, I'm willing to believe that part of the reason that marker wasn't working on me is because of the way I was using it. Because I guess it's better if I just kind of do like long strokes, long, hard strokes, instead of like that quick back and forth. Maybe because it is a paint marker, you can't just will the paint to move all willy-nilly. And you have to kind of paint with it. Maybe. I'm willing to admit that I might have been wrong. And I'm willing to, you know, say that it wasn't the marker's fault. But anyways, I'm going to finish it up with this one just because it is bigger. And I'm already here. And I know I can get this done in like a second, which I am. As you can see, the progress is quick. But yeah, I just wanted to say that maybe my frustrations are my fault. <laughs> okay, so now pretty much I'm just waiting for this to dry so it can go in with white. I told you we're going to use every single supply and we are. And the white is the only one we have not yet used. So I do want to add some white highlights. I do need to clean up some areas and hopefully not destroy this marker. But because it's white, I do definitely need it to be dry so that I don't just dirty up the nib. And look at how black my fingers are because I was switching the nib. Ugh. What do you guys think of this so far? I actually really like it. I kind of was inspired by at Yinia dot art on instagram i'm not sure if you pronounce that right but i usually pop it up on the screen anyways and she just recently did a piece which was black and white and i thought that with the pascas it would be cool to do something that was very starkly black since with watercolors i can't really do that too often i thought this would be a cool time to try it out and i feel like with these colors i knew it would be difficult to do something with a lot of tone because as you know these are all very similarly toned. They're kind of like the same shade or the same hue, tint, hue, pigment, one of those words. Like they're a different color, but they're all on the same hue of the color wheel. Like they're all like it's blue, purple and pink, but they're all the same lightness, if that makes any sense. I think it does, but I don't know how to word it. I'm sorry, I'm a, I'm a failure as an artist. <laughs> so I knew I wanted to do a piece that was more like pop art. I didn't want to do anything that had heavy tones or anything like that. And because obviously I couldn't get shadows or highlights with these colors, I could only get the color with the color. I know at this point I woke up like two hours ago, but for some reason I cannot figure out words today. It's just not my day for words. Okay, 
I have killed enough time as it is. Let's go in with the white and see what we can accomplish. Honestly, I think that's gonna have to do it because I don't wanna mess it up. And I feel like if I keep going, that's what I'm gonna do. I hope the white dots in the background kind of pass as snow, but I don't think it really does, unfortunately. It just looks like polka dots. I've got stripes, I've got polka dots. That's the piece. <laughs> But I did have a lot of fun with this. I actually think it really came out pretty great. So I'm pretty excited about that. Thankful that I looked up a reference for this jacket because I had no idea what I was going to do for the jacket. So yeah, that is the finished piece. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys get Scrawler Box, tell me how you felt about this month's Scrawler Box. Well, not this month, but the month of September of this year. If you liked it, if you didn't like that these were so similarly toned or what have you let me know. So yes, please have a great day, have a great week, and have a great life, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye!